so this that this little bit that you highlight here yatsu no te shita ni mitsukatara means his underlings yeah um founded by if uh, found, found by, by his, his underlings. yes if found by his underlings exactly so you translated it correct last time but i'm just saying the reason why ni here is because the verbs mitsukaru and it would be wa if the verb was uh mitsukeru so i just like whoops mitsukeru. there so mitsukeru is i find yes. i'm the one who finds something the subject of the sentence finds. So the subject okay. of this sentence is um, the main character, Ore, who, um, spoilers, his name is Khan. Um, so Khan would be the one being found. Khan's the one being Chao, which is the be beaten up. Um, Khan is the one that is a wanted person. So that's like to be chased, a person that is chased by um, the Man of Twilight. So... Um, the, these right here are all passive because we're all talking about the main what happens to Khan. So if Khan moves, then because he's wanted by the men of Twilight, if he's found by a minion, he'll get the crap beat out of him. Oh, sorry for bad words. I... The stuffing beat out of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what um, kan kanji character this is? This is meh. Perfect. So, meo hikarasu um, is to keep a watchful eye on something. So, it's funny because hikarasu is to, like, light something, like the shine a light on. So, the shine a light on an eye is to keep an eye on something. Meo hikarasu. Meo hikarasu. Do you know what this word means? Gakureru. Gakureru. Mm. I feel like I've seen this word before. To hide? It is. To hide. Specifically, it's like to hide yourself. So kakusu, for example, it's another verb you might hear. That is to hide something. So kakureru shows up in kakurembo, which is hide and seek. So kakureru, to hide. Um, how is this kanji read? Kakureru. Yeah, perfect, kakureru. You know what the te form of kakureru is? It is a ru verb. Ru verb. Kakurete. Perfect. Can you read the sentence for me? Hikure no kimi Hai. wa kakureru. What does this mean? With regard to the Lord of Twilight, I hide. So I the, hide from the, the Lord I, of Twilight. The I part is the subject. So, watashi wa kakureru would mean I hide. The subject, though, is higure no kimi. So, it means the man oh. of twilight hides. The man of twilight hides himself. Yes. yes, he hides himself. Exactly. So, yeah, kakureru just means that the person, that's the thing that's being hidden is the subject. The subject does the hiding. So kakusu, which is, it means the subject is hiding something else, like um, like a pen. So or something. suppose, if suppose this sentence go, I say higu higure no kimi ni kakureru. What would that mean? Suppose that wa was a ni. With with a ni, that would most like normally the ni in this context would insinuate the direction you hide. So, um, like for this would normally be like a place name in that case, like uh, beds no shita ni kakureru would be not hide underneath the bed. Um, the I I think you're asking like how to make kakureru into um, passive form. Like, which, right? How would I say I hide from the Lord of Twilight? Well, um, I probably use kara here. Higure no kimi kara watashi wa kakureru. Uh, Let's see, just just so that's the most simplest. But there there's many ways to um express something like that. Um, uh, our next word is shui. You know what shui means? Shui, 
E is a an area. Mm -hmm. Shu is in the word for a week, or to go, or to repeat, or something like that. Like shu, shu. Um, what's that word for weekend? Something right, right, right. Shu is next week. Yes. Hi. Um. So that's like really interesting to think about. Um. So shui means um your surroundings, and so that's like mawari, which also has that kanji there. Um, shu, matsu, matsu. Shumatsu, shumatsu, so shumatsu weekend. is a little bit different, it looks like. The kanji has this guy with it. So we got a little bit of a road. I actually don't know what this radical means. Um, Ninyo, I think. Like that. So yeah, super similar. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of more like an around like thingy. So shui is your surroundings. And so is mawari. Oh. Hey. Um, so a surrounding area. Yes, a surrounding area. Can you shui. read the sentence for me? Shui ni me o hikarazu. Hikarasu. Yes. Pay attention to the surrounding area. Exactly. Yep. There's that too. So keep a watchful eye on the surroundings. Nice. So this right here is not pronounced as do. Do you know how this is pronounced? Wakimichi. Perfect. So this is side street, similar to an alleyway, walkie mati. So walkie is like your side. So you'll see this on its own sometimes referred to like going underneath someone's arm, for example. Like you're like, you cannot go past me if you go through their walkie. That pops up. Makes sense. Okay. So with idosuru, which is to move locations, that was the word we learned um, last week. What particle do you think we should have between wakimichi and idosuru to move to a side street? To a side street, then it would be wakimichi ni yes. idosuru. Correct. Perfect. Nice. Here's our next word, saka. Do you know what saka means? Saka. It had the character for earth that. there. A hill? It a is slope. hill. Yep, a hill or a slope. Nice. Um, do you know how this is pronounced? Hairu. Yep, hairu to enter. So how would you say to enter a side street? To enter a side street would be wakimachi o hairu. That's a good guess, but it's actually still ni. Wakimichi uh -huh. ni hairu. Because it's entering two in the direction. To enter. Because you're not really doing haiduing to the street. You're not making the, if you're going to like put something in the street, perhaps you could have like an O there in some way. But the idea is that you're going in this direction. You're not doing something to the street. Nothing's being done to it. Um, here's our next Makes word. Tochu. Do you recognize the chu kanji here? Tochu. Yes. Chu in the middle. Yep, middle. So tochu is used when you're like halfway done of something. Like normally it's like in the middle of um doing an action. So either like walking somewhere or something like that. Tochu. Um tochu. you could also be like if I'm talking about a saka. Saka. Uh tochu could be halfway up the mountain. Basically, halfway up the hill. Saka, the hill. Yes. Earlier. Saka. Yeah. Um, could you read the sentence for me? It's a little refresher guy. Higure no kimi wa kasureru. Close. Kaku. Kakureru. What does this mean? It means the Lord of Twilight hides. Perfect. And what does this mean? Saka no tochu no waki michi. The sidewalk in the the sidewalk 
on the way, on the way, the sidewalk that's on the way to the hill. Kind of. The sidewalk that lead, the sidewalk that lead up to the hill. Basically. So this right here is a side street that is on the hill somewhere, but it's not on the top of the hill and it's not on the bottom hill. It's somewhere in between these two locations. Not necessarily directly in the middle, but somewhere between these two locations, there is a side street. So Saka no Tochu no Wakimichi is the side street in the middle of the hill somewhere. Somewhere on the hill, basically. But not on the top area of the hill, somewhere between those two locations. Um, okay. So earlier we saw hikarasu. Here is hikaraseru. This is the potential form of the word, which means it's your the ability to do something. So rather than to keep a watchful eye on something, it is to be able to keep an eye on something. And this conjugates like a do verb. Meo hikaraseru. What is the te form of um, hikaraseru? Hikarasete. Perfect. Um, so now we're learning new grammar with it, which is nagara. So we have nagara works so that we get that stem form we learned last week, I think, which is basically adding e to the end of the verb. So no nusumu turns into nusumi. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Mado seki o nusumi nagara. Ore chishin made kesu. What do you think Meaning, this means? Wow, I was stealing the magical stone. Um, I almost disappear completely. So it's, it, it actually literally says I disappear completely. The almost is not in um, this version of the word of the sentence. I don't have the ayoku and get this now, tokoro, that, that. But yeah, that, that is the thing. So. I completely disappear. Yep, I completely disappear. I, all myself, up to that extent, disappear. Um. So with that, how do you think you'd say, while being able to keep a watch on my surroundings, I had? We have shui, which is surroundings. Meo hikarasen is to be able to keep watch. And kakureru, to hide. Able to keep watch on surrounding. Shui o... On my surrounding, keep a watch on. Chui o me o hikara seru. So I need to change it to a hikare hika stem form. Hikara se nagara. Yep. Perfect. Um, I hi oreo. I mean, ore wa kakureru. Nice. You have one mistake. You have two O's here, but only one verb. Which O do you think we have a problem with? The chui. Yep, shui. Shui should not or have shui. an O here. What do you so, think it should be? On my surrounding. So at my surrounding. Ni. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Shui ni meo hikarasen nagara ore wa kakureru. Perfect. Nice. So our next word is ippo. Ippo is like one step. Like to take a step. So ip is one and po is a counter for steps. And it shows up in the word aruku, Hai. which means to walk. To walk. Now you get to read a sentence from our book. Um, shui, shui ni meo hik, hikarase nagara, saka no tochu no waki michi ni ippo haite kakurete ita. Um, while keeping an eye on the surrounding, 
on the the sidewalk the sidewalk in the middle uh the the sidewalk somewhere up the hill um one step one step enter disappear Hi. To hide. So, to hide Waki Michi, one step you keep on translating it as sidewalk, and sidewalk in English specifically refers to an area on the side of the road. Waki Michi is more like a side street. Side street. Which, um, basically, I... there's a main street, and then there's side streets that are basically alleyways. So basically, a walking michi and an alleyway are basically the same thing. An alleyway just is like it me is like like a smaller meaning. So an alleyway is a kind of walking michi. I um makes sense. So ippo haite. That is one step. Enter yep. one step. One step yep. into the into what. Into the side street, and I disappear. Exactly, and I hide. Perfect. So I, I take hide. one step while keeping an eye on my surroundings. I take one step into a side street on the middle of the hill, and I um, hide. Perfect. Okay, kanji check. Do you remember how I... this kanji is read? Heshita. Perfect. So I always read this as Teshita, and I know you've been listening to our um, discussion. Sometimes um, Chris will read it as Teka. Um, there's no real difference between the two, Teka and Teshita. Just depends on which one you prefer. I like Teshita because I know I'll never mistake it because this is Shita and that's Te. So <laughs> let's, let's likely make a mistake, but they're they're exactly the same. They There's no actual difference. It's just preference. Um... How about this guy? You know how this guy's read? Owareru. Perfect. Nice. And this guy? That's it. Perfect. Perfect. So now we're on the next paragraph. Um, Do you recognize this kanji? To hide, right? Close. Kakuru. Um, kakureru looks a little bit different than that. Kakureru. Pick that up. Both of them have this part. Parts the same. Kakuredu has um like to hit a heart, which is isoide. isoide. That means um to hurry up, but this is kokoro. Heart isoide. and ataru. ataru. To hit. So it's like to hit your heart, kind of. Uh, looks like that's not exactly that, but it's pretty close. But yeah, kakuredu is like to hide quickly. <laughs> this one is to go downhill? Yes. This one right here is furu. Which is to fall. To um, fall. It can mean down in a very specific context. Um, uh, but it, it, for our cases, we're, lear we're learning it as fudu to fall. Fudu, fudu. Is, is this the character we learned last time from yes. Ame? Fudu? Yep, Ame ga fudu. Yep, that's the fudu that shows fudu. up there. Hi, perfect. Okay. okay, our next word is fukeru. This right here, this word means to advance. And it's commonly used to mean that um, like the day is advancing, like it's getting darker, the it's getting dark today. So the day is continuing, you know? So it's like a, I, time is advancing. Get it. Get it. So how would you read this, um, this kanji first? Yoru ga fukeru. Perfect. Yep. Um, next word is that's it. So if you've been in the Japanese learning community, you may have learned that dasu means to exit. Um, it doesn't really mean that. Like it can in certain contexts, but what it really is is like to appear. To appear. But like it's a to appear like outside. Tends huh. to be true. So someone will if someone dasus onto a stage in a play, that means they're appearing out from the crowd area if you dasu your pen out of your backpack it's appearing into the real world basically so dasu tends to work when you're in a smaller location and you're entering a bigger location so uh 
Deguchi is the exit of the building because you're in a narrower space and you're going and you're appearing in the outside world. So it's better to know it as a peer due to how it shows up in compound words to mean to start something. This 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 thing appears, the action appears with um compound verbs, which we'll be seeing in a little bit. Very nice. Like uh, it. <laughs> so our next word is daibu. This just means like a lot, like a large a amount. A lot, lot. Daibu. daibu. And do you remember how this is read? Furu. Yep. To Ame ga furu. Exactly. Um, can you read the sentence for me? Yoru ga daibu fukeru. What does this mean? The um, evening have passed, um, had, um, or not have, the, the evening passes a lot, or the, yes. it, it has darken quite a bit it had passed yes. in late into the evening yes you're right it is late in the evening that's exactly what they so specifically it's basically saying the night is advancing on us by quite a bit so theoretically you could argue it's not totally yodu yet but like it's basically yodu the night is like it depends like it's basically saying it's not um 1 a.m yet but it's probably almost midnight it's the night is advancing on us so, um, I'll put that one thing. How do you read this word? Yoru. Uh, um, next page. Furi dasu. Hi, furi dasu. So, what do you think this means? We have a compound verb with dasu to appear, and furu to fall. To mm, to drop from a. Uh... It means to, uh, to start um, falling. To start basically. falling. So oh, basically it means this action is appearing, is what it is. And that's what dasu is basically always going to mean with compound verbs. And almost every single verb can be compound this way, furidasu. Sometimes you'll also will see hajimeru, which means to start as well. Uh, the context is like a little bit different. Hajimeru normally is like, it will commence. Um, versus dasu is more like it's happening. Um, happening. So furi dasu is the Hi. rain starts to fall. Our it's next start. word. Yep. Next word mata. is mata. Do you know what that means? Mata is again. Perfect. Um, what's the sentence mean? Can you read it for me? Mata ame ga furi dasta. It started raining again. Perfect. So this word right here is iku, which means to go. You don't need to know this for this um specific deck, but um I'm using this as a comparison word. Our next word is kuru, which means to come. Hey. In Japanese, these tend to be used kind of like opposites. So if I'm coming over here, then you're going that way. They're kind of opposites. So for example, do you remember how to read this word? You got that. You got that was the word that actually meant evening. Yoru means night. Yoru so night. these are actually a little bit different. The evening is like 5 to like 8 p.m. And Yoru is like 9 to like, I don't know, 5 a.m. or something. It's, that, that's kind of like how the evening turns into night, basically. Yoru is when you Yoru. should be sleeping. Evening is when you should be going home, eating dinner, maybe dessert. So because so of this. If you said, um, you got the ga iku, this means basically the evening is going and yoru ga kuru means the night is coming. So theoretically, these are referring to the same thing. Um, these are not super common sentences. Uh, you will see yoru ga um, iku and asaga iku, which means the, the sun and the night comes and goes basically. But uh, I'm just teaching you this metaphorical because it's going to be showing something similar to this in the next sentence. But basically, time as idea, if time is going away from you, so time is passing, that's going iku, away. And if time's coming toward you, then that's kuru. It's kuru. Yeah. Right. Um, this type of thing shows up a lot of times in compound verbs. Normally, you will not see kanji when this happens. So if I said, yoru ga fukite kuru, 
it means the night is advancing toward us. So we're basically, we're kind of adding a time like idea to this. So it's like right now, it's this time, and here's our Yoru time plot. And it's, you know, going this way on our timeline. It's spooky te kuru. Um, so kuru is help using to put us into the story. Basically, the help set us into here. So you'll see a lot of times like um, iku, kuru, and stuff in Japanese, but even in third person narration to kind of like set a scene to be like, oh, this is coming toward the camera. This is coming timeline wise, things like that, which does right. not really exist in English, really. Yeah. So in English, we used to say the night is advancing, but here is the night is advancing toward us. Toward us. So kudu is a really weird verb in that it's one, it's the most irregular verb. It's more irregular than sudu. So kudu, the te form is kite. So sudu turns into kite. I mean, kudu turns into kite. Okay. So now you're ready to read this line. Yoru mo daibu fukete kite. Mata ame ga furidashita. So earlier, I don't know if you remember this, but earlier we were told that because it had rained in the evening, the floor was wet. So that's what we know. Earlier, it had rained. Now what happened? The floor is wet. No, I'm, just, I'm letting you know why this is here. <laughs> oh, more. Um, more die. Oh. Okay, well, did you I'm sorry, do you want me to translate this sentence, yes, right? Translate it. So, the night already this mo have a sense of already, right? Not really. That'd be mo, the long mo. Mo here long is mo. also. Also. Okay, so um the night already approach um for the most part daibu yeah but not already it's more like um it's advancing advancing quite a bit it's getting darker the night the night has gotten dark quite a bit um and the rain not and but the rain started uh falling so there is an and Again. right here with kite. I'm mean, got kite. Uh, I'm I'm having a hard time translating this mo in this okay. sentence. So As it's in, saying the night has also started getting late. It's it's also getting late to right now. The night it has also been advancing, and the rain begins the fall once again. So basically, we're setting the stage. So earlier we were told that in the evening. It had rained, but it's not currently raining. And the main character, he's he's over in the Twilight District, and he's like, hmm, I haven't got any food. Should I go to a different place? Mm, the man of Twilight's looking for me. He's going to beat me up if they happen to happen upon me. Then he goes over into a side street and hides in there. When he's hiding in there, time passes. It's getting even later, so some time has passed. It's The light has advanced quite a bit. And the rain starts to fall once again. So it wasn't raining, but now it is raining. So that, that's see. what that's telling. Me. So it's kind of just the time. Poor, poor Khan's been waiting. Now it's raining. <laughs> Still has no food. <laughs> that's what that's saying. Now he's hungry and he's about to get wet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now we get to have the sound effect that's za za. Any guess that's what kind of sound effect this? Like what kind of adverb this is? This is the Omo, who is that? Yep. Onomatopedia, yep. So sound effects that are adverbs get told with them. So that's oh. what happens with that. So if I wanted to have Zaza with a verb, you might say a sentence like this. Can you read it for me? Ame ga Zaza to furu. Perfect. So if you took out the sound effect, it would just be like, oh, rain is falling. Doesn't tell us anything. Zaza, though, helps tell us how it's raining. It's raining in a zaza kind of way, which is a downpour. 
right. the sound effect. Rain a lot. Like, exactly. Um, funnily enough, there's also a noun that is Zaza Fudi. I'm going to stick this Zaza on foodie. here. Zaza Fudi. So this is a noun that was made from the adverb. So that's why there's not a to here because it's no longer a verb. But if you were keeping fudu as a verb, you would have to. But if you want as a I... noun, then it looks like that. Um, right now it's our halfway point. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'll see you in two seconds. Hi.